Welcome to Life Church Birmingham. Welcome to our special Christmas service. Would you stand up on your feet with us as we get ready to sing a special song together? Suddenly, your life came breaking through the darkness, breaking every heart with heaven singing joy unto the world. Our long awaited Savior, you will reign forever. We are singing joy unto the oh, 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 oh. Hope is here. So lift your eyes and see his glory and splendor. The Son of God loves pure light. We come before you with wonder. In a manger we have found our mighty King. And all creation held its breath when suddenly your life came breaking through the darkness waking every heart with heaven singing joy unto the world our long awaited savior you will reign forever we are singing joy unto the oh, 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 oh. To the world, joy, joy, joy to 
Joy to the world. Joy, joy, joy to the world. Joy, joy, joy to the world. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. The sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding joy. Joy, joy, joy to the world. Joy, joy, joy to the world. Joy, joy, joy to the world. Joy, joy, joy to the world.
you sing this Christmas carol with us? You 
the sins of the world hallelujah Jesus is here <laughs> good morning why don't you smile real big at me turn to your neighbor and tell him you love him <laughs> just tell him you love him I love you brother I love you sister <laughs> good morning good morning you may be seated wow thank you team Thank you, team, for that, for entering into the presence of the Lord. We're so glad that you are here uh, this morning. If I haven't met you before, my name's Tim. I'm the pastor, and I'm really excited to have you come and worship with us today. We hope that you feel loved and welcome, and whether you're here for the first time or maybe the first time in a long time, we're just, we say welcome to you, so it's good to see you. Hey, we're going to invite you to uh, uh, join, to connect with us. Well, maybe you're watching today on Facebook Live or our YouTube channel. You can participate as well in this. We'd love to hear from you. First of all, if you're a guest, we're just going to kind of let you know kind of how we do things. We'd love to connect, and one of the ways we do that is through our connection card. So in the seat back in front of you, or if you're in the front row, should be right there beside you or behind you, grab a connection card real quick, and there's a pin there too. Take a few moments and fill that out. You'll notice there's a place for first-time guests. So put your name and check the box that says first-time guest. Um, or second or third. After three, we say regular tender. And on the back of the card, there's a place for prayer requests. We would love to be praying for you this week. So if you write it down, we'll be agreeing with you this week and praying for you and asking, uh, uh, believing God for, um, for his best on your behalf. So, so write it down. We'll be praying for you this very week. At the end of the service, we'll receive all these connection cards together. And so as you exit, you'll notice some ushers at the door to receive them. Um, and it's also a time of the service that we choose to give. And so just know that uh, they'll be there to receive your tithe and offering. And um, thank you for your willingness to give. You can check out the screen behind me. There's several ways to give. We try to make it as convenient as possible. Uh, maybe you're watching at home as well. You can, you can click on the link there on our website or app and, and give digitally. And um, we would just love to hear from you that way as well. If you're a guest... There's like zero pressure for you to give anything. We're glad you're here. But we do set that uh, time aside to honor God with our first fruits. We believe what the Bible says about honoring God with our first fruits, with our tithe, a 10% offering. So feel free to worship along with us. 
um, in that part as well. Hey, whether you're on Facebook Live or our YouTube channel or here in person for the first time, can we give our guests a warm live church welcome this morning? Come on. Yeah. So glad that you are here. It's so good to see you. Hey, I just want to uh, give you a shout out. Um, yesterday was a phenomenal day. We had a big, uh, what we call a big give. We did a big outreach to the community. And I just want to uh, say, first of all, thank you. Um, if you were here yesterday, you know that that was like the tip of the spear, that there's so much prayer and so much work and so much preparation that went into that. And I want to thank you as a pastor from the bottom of my heart for your willingness to give and to work and to volunteer. And, and so just a report, we were able to distribute over 11,000 pounds of food yesterday to the community. Yeah, that's amazing because of your generosity and your hard work. And we want to say thank you for that. And we, uh, there was about 250 people that heard, uh, that came inside and heard a gospel message. And of those, we had 53 say yes to Jesus. Come on! Come on! That's great! <laughs> yes! And so, if you're part of that, uh, thank you. And if you came yesterday, hey, welcome to our service. And we are so, uh, so glad that you're here. Uh, we want to invite you to be part of uh, this week's uh, ministry. We have our Wednesday night service, and then next Sunday is Christmas Eve. So we'll have our morning, our regular morning 10 a.m. service right here with everyone. The, the family and everyone will be here. There'll be no small groups that morning, but we'll have our 10 o'clock service. Bring the kids, everyone, and we'll have a great uh, Christmas time uh, together on Christmas Eve. Well, before I preach, we've got a special music uh, presentation we want you to worship along with. Though we tried and tried, we could not save ourselves. But God, in his infinite wisdom, provided a way, a way not mapped out by human hand, but divinely directed to change the course of history. Through his son Jesus, salvation made its way from the throne of heaven to the thrones of humanity, arriving not in splendor, but in simplicity as a baby. This was not entirely what was expected, but it's exactly what was needed. Behold, the King has come, divinity incarnate, creator of the world, breathing our air. Behold what light has come, and the dark cannot contain it, the Savior of the world is finally Behold the Father's love Beyond all comprehension He gave His only Son To die in our place Through Jesus, all is accomplished The words of the law and the prophets fulfilled Salvation has come to the lost Sight for the blind, healing for the sick, death reversed, and sin defeated for good. So here and now, at Christmas, we stand in awe and worship, not to simple sing happy songs and exchange humble gifts, but to remember why Jesus was born. For in his birth, he set course to the cross, and that cross casts an internal light on the shadows of this world. Life that makes the darkness flee, the enemy retreat, and death itself reverse. We worship today because salvation is ours through Jesus Christ, the baby, born 
to die, born to save the world and overcome the grave. He's not there for he is risen. Every heart prepare him through. Jesus Christ, the King of heaven. Come on, somebody. That was good, wasn't it? Thank you, team. Thank you. Grab your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 2. We're continuing our series called Arrival. And last week we talked about the arrival of peace. And today I want to talk to you about the arrival of joy. The arrival of joy. Come on, we, we could use some joy right now. Come on. The arrival of joy. Here's the scene Luke chapter 2, Jesus is appearing, Mary is given birth, the angels appear to the shepherds on the side, on the edge of town, and verse 8 picks up on that story, and here's what it says. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause, what? Great joy for all the people. For all the people. Today in the town of David, 
A Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace to those on whom his fear or his favor rests. If you're an underliner, I want you to underline a couple things, or at least look at them. In verse 10, it either says, fear not, or do not be afraid. Whichever translation, same thing. Don't be afraid. Second thing, there will be great joy. Why should I not be afraid? And how will there be great joy? Verse 11, because today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He's Messiah, the Lord. So how does the Lordship of a newborn baby boy make it possible for you and me to have joy this morning. How does he make that possible for us to have joy at Christmas in 2023? I mean, for you and your family, not just the shepherds. It is for everyone who says, Jesus is Lord. It's for all. Luke chapter 2 verse 10, we just read, tells us that there's great joy Coming into the world. How can that be? Because in the town of David, today a Savior has been born. Christ the Lord. What makes this great joy possible for all of us? For you and for me. For your family. For your neighbors. Is there's a baby boy who will be a Savior, yes. Not just that, but the long-awaited Messiah. Also, that He is the Lord. I want to talk to you of five reasons why the Lordship of Jesus Christ can give you joy. You might say, Tim, (laughs) don't you watch the news, man? (laughs) The sky is falling. The sky is falling. It's falling on my family. It's falling on my church. The sky is falling on our city. You might say, the sky is falling on our nation, on on the world. How how, how are you going to tell me that I can have great joy when the world is on fire? So that's our question. I think it's a good question. How can the Lordship of a newborn baby boy, make it possible for us to have great joy. Five reasons. I want you to write them down. Number one is this. Jesus is the Lord sent from God. So I'm going to be trekking through Luke 2. You probably won't have time to turn to most of them. So I've got them on the screen for you, the most of them. Jesus is Lord sent from God. He's the divine Lord. When we say... Jesus is Lord, we mean Jesus is God. Luke says it so many different ways in his gospel. Jesus is Lord sent from God. It's God from God to us. In the first two chapters of Luke alone, you can go back and fact check me later. The word Lord occurs 27 times. 25 of them referring to God. Um, I'll just breeze through a couple of them. Luke 2, 9. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. Luke 2, 11. Today in the town of David, the Savior is born to you. He's Messiah, the Lord. No hesitation. No, no qualification. The Lord God sent His angel, and the glory of the Lord God shown in the child to be born is the Lord. Sent from God to us. Luke 2.26 
it's been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he sees the Lord's Messiah. Luke 2.11, Christ the Lord, it, it virtually means the same thing as the beginning of the book of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus is the Lord's Christ. He is Christ the Lord. The Bible says he was born of a virgin. Now that's an interesting way to bring the Lord into the picture. The whole point of the story of the virgin birth is that Jesus is Lord. The Lordship of Christ. Gabriel says to young Mary, the angel Gabriel says to young Mary, hey, you're going to have a baby. She's like, that's interesting. How's that going to work out for me? I'm not even married. I'm a virgin. I, how, how am I going to have a baby? Angel says, Luke 135 on the screen, here's how that's going to work out. The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called what? Son of God. This is the Holy Spirit, listen, making it clear, making it clear that no human father would be needed because he is going to work an unfathomable miracle in Mary's womb so that there will be a child with two natures, man and God, divine and human. Jesus is the God-man. Jesus is Lord. Luke ends his book with an interesting scenario. At the end of the book of Luke uh, 24, here's the scene. He was leaving and ascending to heaven. He'd given final commands. Go and wait. Go into all the world, preach the gospel. Before you do that, go wait. Got a gift. Send the Holy Spirit. It all makes sense later, but just obey me. While he was blessing them, he left them. He was taken up into heaven. They worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with what? Great joy. And they stayed, continued out in the temple. What were they doing? Praising God. So what did they do? They worshipped him. Who's the him here? They worship Christ. That's the point of Luke's gospel. Worship him with great joy. <laughs> That's the point. That's the point. You, you can have great joy this Christmas because Jesus is the Lord God sent from God. Jesus is Lord means Jesus is God. He's Lord sent from God. Number two. Jesus is a historical Lord. All right, I don't want to lose you here. You read some of the Bible and you, you think to yourself sometimes, hmm, I'm sure that's in there for a reason, but like, so what? Why is that there? You can have great joy because Jesus is a historical Lord. What I mean is, the accounts that we will talk about and read about and think about and celebrate of the birth and arrival of Jesus, they're, they're not mythical. Um, this is not uh, Narnia, <laughs> right? This is, this is not um, um, in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> it's not Greek mythology. It's world history. Not Middle Earth. <laughs> it's, it's, it's world history. It takes place, Luke 1 5, in the days of Herod, king of Judea. Okay? Mary was from a city, a city of Galilee named Nazareth, a real town. I looked it up. 
It's still there this morning. A real place. She came with Joseph to where? To Bethlehem. Guess what? Another real town. Still there. About five miles outside of Jerusalem. Because there was a decree sent out from who? Caesar Augustus. Like, who cares? <laughs> who cares? Because God laid it on the heart of the most powerful person on the planet to call for a census because he needed a virgin to move and get herself to a certain location so that when her water broke and when that baby came, she would be where the prophet said she would be. <laughs> Don't you see? <laughs> this was the first registration when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. Who cares? Who cares? Because every historian can look up and they know, they know there was a governor of Syria at that time by that name. He's a real person, a historical God. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that this would be taken the entire Roman world. Everyone went to their town to register. Joseph went up to the town of Nazareth in Galilee. Don't you see, friend? How about John? His Baptist, John the Baptist ministry. I worked on these pronunciations. We'll see how I do. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, Herod Tetrarch of Galilee, the brother of Philip Tetrarch of Thurea, and Tricontus, Tricontus and Licinius Tetra of Abilene. Why? Why? Because here's the point. They're real people. They really had an office. They really ruled. You can look them up in world history. This isn't myth. This is fact. This is how it happened. That's the point of them being there. He's a historical God. The point is that Jesus was real. He was just as real as if he would have been born when Joe Biden was president of the United States, Kay Ivey, the governor of Alabama, and Randall Woodfin, the, the mayor of Birmingham. Don't you see? He's a historical God. He's a historical God. It's possible to have great joy because Jesus is a historical Lord. The third one is this. Jesus is all-powerful. He's an all-powerful Lord. You can have great joy because Jesus, born of a virgin, and if laid in a feeding trough, a little cutaway cave where animals would stay at night. He's an all-powerful Lord. He's Lord over wind and waves. You need to know that. Do you remember the story of the disciples? They're hanging out with Jesus. They're on a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. A tiny ship was tossed. And Gilligan. The millionaire. So they were, they were in the, they're, they're all freaking out. <laughs> Jesus, don't you know what you're, we're going to drown. We're about to drown, Jesus. Jesus got up. <laughs> Isn't it funny? He, he rebukes the wind and the waves. The raging waters, the NIV says. The storm subsided and all was calm. I just want you to see this picture. And those guys turn to each other and they're saying, did, did you see that? Am, am I the... 
Did you see what happened? He opened his mouth and commanded the winds and the waves and they obeyed him. <laughs> He's all powerful. Who is this who commands even the winds and the waters and they obey him? He's all powerful. You can have joy because He commands. He's Lord over wind and waves. He's Lord over demonic spirits. Luke 4, 41. Moreover, demons came out of many people shouting, You're the Son of God! But He rebuked them and would not allow them to speak because they knew He was the Messiah. I don't want you to have this picture of heaven where there's two forces battling it out. There's Jesus fighting on the good side and there's Satan fighting on the bad side and we're going to just duke it out and we're going to pray and hope that Jesus wins and we're just going to believe for the best and you know, Jesus might take a few blows here and there and he might get down but we're just going to believe he's going to get back up and he's going to finally choke out the devil and one day he's going to, friend... They didn't open their mouth without him allowing them. He has dominion over the spirit realm. He has authority over the spirit realm. And in the name of Jesus, you can evoke that name, believer, and take authority. Don't you see? He's an all-powerful God over demonic spirits. He's Lord over sickness and diseases. Luke 4.40 says this, at sunset, the people brought to Jesus all who have various kinds of sicknesses and laying his hands on each one, he healed them. All were healed. Not some, but all. Every single one. No failures. No one walked away ill. No one walked away with disease. Those who touched Jesus were made new. No one walked away with strep throat or arthritis or bursitis or kidney dysfunction. No one walked away with liver diseases or bleeding disorders or blood disorders. No one walked away with cancer or skin conditions. All who touch Jesus were He's all powerful, friend. He's all powerful. And He is Lord over your and my greatest enemy, death. He's Lord over death. He's all power. Here's the scene a boy had died. Jesus walks up on the funeral procession. He went up and touched the beard, which is his casket. Yours might say box or coffin they were carrying him on so G jesus walks up and he and he and he, and he t they're carrying he 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 touches it and the bears paul bears stood still they're startled jesus says young man get up oh oh get up <laughs> the dead man sat up began to talk and Jesus gave him back to his mother <laughs> friend Jesus has authority over death though we may die we will live forever Though, listen, it's appointed a man once to die, but in Christ, oh, you may die, but you'll live forever. He has authority over death. He can stop funerals. Listen, he has, he's preparing a place for you. Your greatest enemy, your greatest enemy, death. He has authority over death and the dying, and he's preparing a place, and he will come again, and he will raise the dead, and they will ascend to rule and reign with him. He has authority over death. He He's all-powerful. He's all-powerful. He's Lord over details. Some of you got complicated situations. Oh, it's complex. Can I tell you, he's Lord over details. I thought about this this week. It's a theory. You may have heard of it. The butterfly effect. You know it goes something like this. 
There's a butterfly over the tip of South Africa. The butterfly flaps his wings, stirs the wind. A few particles of sand move. You adjust the winds just right. A series of events, blah, 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 and a Category 3 hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. Cause and order. Jesus has the ability to reverse the butterfly effect. All right. Can you see Luke, the Gospel of Luke writer, begin his book with this story? God's going to choose a virgin and her betrothed who are living in Nazareth. Their family line was from Bethlehem where the Messiah would be born. To get this little virgin girl to the proper birthplace, he has to put it in the mind of the most powerful person on the planet, Caesar Augustus, who really ruled who was living a thousand miles away to call for emperor-wide emperor registration involving millions and millions of people. Because exactly at the moment that it needed to happen, this little obscure little virgin Hebrew girl, pregnant, this from Nazareth would be in Bethlehem. I looked it up. You can drive it this morning. It's 27 kilometers. You mathematicians can do the real measurement. Miles, I mean, you know. 5,300. Takes about 38 minutes with traffic. In your car. He needed to transplant this little girl. He's got over details. He's got over details. And some of you have got some details that got you all worked up. It's hard not to get worked. Come on. It's, and you got details that get you all worked up. God did all this to fulfill his prophecy. That's amazing. He's all powerful, all governing, and he's doing that today. He's doing that today. Do you think that the great events on the world stage are about nations and industries? They're not. They're not about nations and industries. God governs the world for the sake of his children. And Jesus governs the world for the sake of those who say Jesus is Lord and means it. Think about the events that got you here today. Just see. He's got over the details. Every one of them. He's all powerful. Fourth, Jesus is Lord forever. He's not a temporary. He's not voted in for four years. He, 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 he's, he, he, he'll last longer than Vladimir Putin's reign. <laughs> he, he, he'll, he, he'll last longer than that senator or congressperson that keeps getting voted in for 30 and 40 years in a row. We won't chase that rabbit trail. But Jesus is Lord forever. You can have great joy because the Jesus who came for you is Lord forever. The angel Gabriel says to Mary, Luke 1, verse 31, you'll conceive Mary and you'll give birth to a son, and you're to call him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called Son of the Most High. The Lord, God, will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Never. He will reign forever. His kingdom will have no end. If you are the subject of His Lordship and you are surrendered to the Lordship of Christ, 
you will live forever. <laughs> you will live forever. Oh, I thought you said we'd die. Oh, we will. <laughs> but we will live forever. <laughs> oh, don't, don't think this temporary shell is all there is, friend. You were created to live forever. The reason Jesus came was that so that He could be with you forever. He will raise your body from the dead according to the Word. And He will bring you with Him into everlasting life. Forever. And His power, right, to govern all things will never end. That's hard to fathom. As a little boy, I would try to think about you know, the whole time-space continuum deal. And you know, you're, when you're 10, you know, your world history is like 10 years. <laughs> so when people talked about like who the president was for Jimmy Carter, I thought it might as well have been talking about Moses. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah, he wasn't around when I was around. <laughs> you just think about that concept. Forever. Forever. How do you think all this happened? Jesus is Lord forever. He's Lord forever. Number five. We'll land here. Jesus is the joy-filled Lord. How can I have joy at Christmas? Because Jesus is full of joy. The Lord, listen, the, I don't know if you know this, the Lord is full of joy. God is happy this morning. God is full of joy. He's not depressed, full of anxiety. He's not worried. He's not trying to figure it out. How's this going to work out? He's full of joy. You can have great joy because Jesus. He, he's the perfect embodiment of the Father's joy. When the angels say uh, to Mary or to the shepherds, glory to God in the highest, they're, they're obeying God. That's, that's what God wants them to say, right? It's a happy shout. Glory to God in the highest. No. Glory to God in the highest. Can you imagine coming from heaven, from God, and bringing this news? <laughs> it's a happy shout. It's a glad night. And the happiness started not on earth. It started in heaven. It started in heaven. Luke completes the picture of God's joy later in his gospel. He, he's the one who records. I think he's the only one that has all three parables of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son. Luke 15. Luke 15. Jesus tells all three parables to explain why am I eating with tax collectors and sinners? Those poor tax collectors, they got their own category of bad, didn't they? <laughs> I mean, you know, if you were for the IRS, no offense. <laughs> it was like government institutionalized organized crime. Yeah, we're going to get, Caesar's going to get his, and whatever you get off the top is yours, and it was extortion at the highest level, and so they were despised, and many got wealthy doing it. Why am I, why are you eating with these people? Don't you know what they do? So he tells a story of the lost coin. We'll just focus on one verse. Verse 9, it's what, here's what it says. And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Hey, rejoice with me. I found my lost coin. Her coin represents Jesus finding a lost sinner. 
That's like the point. Why do I eat with tax collectors and sinners? Because there's this woman who lost the coin. And then she finds it. And she invites, with great joy, celebrate, I found my coin! Some reason, $20 feels funner when you find it in the dryer. <laughs> I mean, you know? Like, oh, especially if you didn't remember where it was. <laughs> Look at that. It's like a slot machine. You just put clothes in and it spits money out. This is great. <laughs> because why? Because you've found something you lost and Jesus says, look, look, she's asking him to come and rejoice because a sinner has come home. That's the point of the story. And what about, uh, 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 it, the, the, um, okay, in Luke 15.10, it goes on to say this. Throw that up there real quick. In the same way I tell you, there is rejoicing, now listen, rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Now I want us to get this picture right. Look carefully at the wording. It doesn't say there is joy among the angels. What it says is there's rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God. So there's joy before the angels. There's joy in their presence. Where does the joy emanate from? Where does the joy that's in the presence, of the, it emanates, it comes from the Father. That's God's happiness. And they're enjoying His joy and celebrating with Him. It comes from the happiness of God when one comes home. Angels are experiencing and rejoicing with God. Because You ever been around someone excited? And you just get excited with them? I mean, they, something great's happened in, your li in their life, and, you're, oh, <laughs> and all of a sudden, you, you feel exhilaration. Oh, I love to watch sports, and especially like the one-on-one, -on -one, like wrestling and swimming and track and field. It's just them and whatever. And you just get emotional. You see the strain, and it, they, they break a record or win a medal, and you're just, yeah, yeah, just oh, I'm so proud of them. Never met them in my life. <laughs> Can you imagine being around the presence of God? And all of a sudden, God begins to rejoice. Oh, God's joy is contagious. What about the lost son? The lost prodigal son. Come on, team. He has squandered his father's inheritance. Gambling, drinking, prostitutes, whatever. God knows what else in the story. It's bad. He's eating pig food. He went from the 52nd story of the high rise in Vegas to the slums. He's, he's, he's out of money. Interesting. Out of money and friends at the same time. <laughs> He's eating pig food and he thinks to himself, what am I, what has become of me? There are people who are servants at my father's house who are better off than this. I'm going to go home, beg for forgiveness, and maybe, just maybe, he will allow me to be a servant until I can pay off all this debt that I just blew, and maybe I, at least I won't be eating this. And I can earn his favor. You need to know the historical context of the story. I can earn the Father's favor back if I just do enough good. That's what he's thinking. Those who are listening to Jesus tell the story, that's what they're thinking. And here comes the twist that they didn't see coming. The father sees the son at a distance. While he was still a long way off, Luke 15, 20, his father saw him 
was filled with compassion for him and ran to his son. The dignified thing, would have, the expected thing would have been the father standing on the porch. Keep crawling. You've done bad. You've got to pay the piper. Jesus said, that's not, that's not how this thing works. He's looking. I, th- I, think, I think it's him. That's how I used to walk. I recognize his, his gait. I, we- I recognize his head's low. I see him. He sees him. He picks up his robe, this old man, and starts running. Starts running. He runs. He runs. He threw his arms around him, and he, and he begins to just cover him with kisses. He, cover, he covers him, and he begins to welcome him and love him. And son, the people listen to the story going, what is this? What is this? And then, if that's not enough, in 22, he, but the father said to his servants, quick, bring the fatted calf and kill it. We're eating good tonight, boys, because my son is home. The lost son is home. This son of mine was dead, and he's alive again. He was lost, and now he's found. So they began to what? Celebrate. You can have joy this Christmas because Jesus is a joy-filled Lord. God is full of joy. He's full. He's happy that you're here today. He's he's celebrating when one person, when one person says, Jesus is Lord. And the angels experience that. And they go, whoa! Whoa! Do you feel that? Do you feel that? They bring the joy of the Father. The Father says in Luke 15, 32, here's where we land. We, we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead. We, like we had to. Don't, don't you see? Don't you see? We had to. You can have joy this Christmas. You can have joy this Christmas because... Jesus is Lord sent from God. He's God from God to to us. He's a historical Lord in a real place, in a real time, with real people and real history. You can it's historical. He's, He's all powerful. Whatever you are in need of. He has the capacity to handle it. He's Lord forever. He's Lord forever. Don't, 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 don't get so caught up in the now that you, forget, that you miss the forever. This too will pass. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. The greatest high and the deepest low. This too will pass. This hurt will pass. This temporary excitement of what a... It will pass and you will experience the Lord for eternity. Don't don't put all your eggs in this basket. The Bible says it like, don't store up for yourselves treasures on earth. (laughs) Store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. And He's the joy-filled Lord. My son's first day on his new job, Huntsville Police Department. Hey, how'd it go? He said, well, I don't know. It's kind of quiet. We talked two people out of killing themselves, and we helped the homeless guy move his stuff out of the front of a store. He said, yeah, the stats go through the ceiling when, um, when uh, holidays come. People get depressed. He said, it's kind of rewarding. One guy was super appreciative. The other person fought us, but we're trying to help him. If you're 
full of hopelessness, Jesus has real joy for you. The lady yesterday at the outreach, pray for me. I don't know how I'm going to make it. I've been thinking about killing myself. I said, sweet lady, you, you don't have to do that. Just try to minister. You, you can have real joy because Jesus is Lord of your circumstances. Because, because if you know him, your name's written. Your name's written in the Lamb's book of life. Do we have authority over demonic forces? In Jesus' name, yes, but don't let that be the source of your rejoicing. Rejoice that your name is written. Rejoice with that. Would you bow your head and close your eyes if you're here today and you need a joy-filled Savior to just wrap his arms around you and to love you and encourage me. He is here. He is here. To, if you're watching online today and you say, hey, uh, Tim, um, today I, I need a joy-filled Savior to help me. He's here for you. He's here. He's more real. He's more real than, than the hand at the end of your arm. He's more real. He's more real. He's a forever God and he loves you. If you're here today, you're watching online, maybe on the YouTube channel or Facebook Live, maybe here in person, and you need the joy of the master to just wrap his arms around you. He's here for you, friend. He loves you. He loves you. The Bible says to cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. And right now, my prayer is that the miracle of the presence of God would be here for you. He's historical. He's real. He's all-powerful. He's got enough authority to take care of your situation. He's Lord over and above mental health and anxiety and depression and stress. He's Lord over disorders in your body. He's Lord over even death. Even death. He's Lord over all those things. He's got a plan and purpose for you. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. If you're here today, first of all, and you would stand before God, and he would ask you, why should I let you into heaven? What would you be able to say? What would you be able to say? I can't say personally. I've got enough cats out of trees and helped enough old ladies across the street, and we can't say we've given enough food away. None of that gets you into heaven. The only thing, the only thing that will help you, the only one who can forgive your sins is Jesus. Jesus is the God of man. He came, lived it, born of a virgin, spotless, a blemishless life, never had sin. He was the perfect sacrifice, the only one who could. And he laid his life down for you, friend. He bled for you. He was whipped for you. He was nailed to a cross for you. He took the beating of that rod for you, the crown of thorns on his head. He was mocked for you, for you, for you. He humbled himself. He became the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He was slain. He died. So you could be raised to life. And to prove his authority to do that, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he was raised up again. His tomb is empty. His tomb is empty. He has authority. His tomb is empty. I'm telling you, his tomb is empty. He has authority to forgive your sins if you'll just ask him. If you're here today and you need a Savior, you need a Redeemer, first things first. Tim, pray for me. Today, I need I need, there's stuff that separates me from God and I need to get that right. If there's something between you and God, you've got uh, sin in your life, you, you've never been born again, maybe you're far away, maybe you say, hey Tim, I'm a Christian, I'm just not acting like one, I'm super far away from God, I don't know how this happened, but it, I, if I'm honest with myself, that's my reality. God's on the front porch. He's not having, he doesn't have his arms folded with a scowl on his face asking you to beg and beg and beg. He's looking. Is that my son? Is that my daughter coming home? And when you begin that, he runs to you.
If that's you, you need a Savior. You need a Redeemer. You need God to forgive you. You need to be born again. You need to be saved. You're so far from God. You, 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 you just need to come back to him. If you're, that's you in any of those categories, in count of three, Tim, pray for me. That's me. Today, before I get, leave today, I need you to pray for me. Please pray for me. That's what I need. And on the count of three, just wave at me. Wave at me. One, I'm talking to you. Two, this is for you. This is for you. Three, all over the place. You say, Tim, I'm far from God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come on. He's the Savior, yeah. Come on, he's the Redeemer. <clears throat> he's the Master. Come on, far from God. I don't want to be. I don't want to be. You don't have to be, friend. Salvation is found in Jesus alone, in him alone. He loves you. He's got a plan. He's got a purpose for you. He's got a purpose for you. All right, if you say, Tim, hey, man, I've got some situations. You talked about Jesus being all-powerful. I sure need some all-powerful Lord in my life. I've got some stuff. I just need to, I just need God. I, I, it's a long story, and there's a bunch of it, and it's complicated, and i got a story, and I just need the Lord. I just need some, the joy-filled Savior to come and help my situation. Pray for me, Tim. I count three, one, two, three, all over the place. Come on, I just need some joy, a joy-filled Savior. Yeah, a joy-filled Savior. <laughs> Maybe you're here today and you say, I need genuine joy in my life. I feel heavy going through the motions. I don't, I just want the joy of the Lord. Would you pray for me? Just lift up all over the place. You just need some joy, the joy of the Lord. Would everyone across the room stand to your feet real quick? Just stand all over the place. Stand all over your place. We're gonna pray for you in just a moment. If you raise your hand, you should have for those things or anything else, we want to pray for you. Would you take a moment to just pause in your seat? And I want you to think about this question. What is God saying to you? What is, what is God reminding you of, of the sermon? What is he trying to say to you? I think, I believe, I know he's saying one thing. I'm your savior. I'm your redeemer. I love you. Son, come on home. Daughter, come on home. Would you bow your head? Just close your eyes. Can we just pray to him right now? Before we pray for one another, can we just pray to him? Can we pray a prayer of just homecoming? Some of you raised your hand. Maybe you didn't, but you should have. You say, I just, I need to come home. I need to come home. <laughs> Let's pray this together out loud, everyone. Dear Lord, I want to come home. I ask that you would forgive me for sin. I do love you. I confess that you're the Lord of my life. And with your strength today, I surrender to you. I believe that you are raised from the dead and you're God of eternity. I come back to you and I say, I love you. I love you. Just tell me you love him right now. Just come on back to him. Tell me you love him. Jesus, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Dispatch your joy. Lord, I pray that you would dispatch your joy. We love you, Jesus. Just begin to tell me you love him. You need the joy of the Lord. Just begin to reach out to him. God, fill us with great joy. If you need, if, if, you, if, you, if you're sick in body, Lord, I, I ask for you to heal me. If you're confused, God, I pray for clarity. You're the Lord over chaos and all circumstances and details. Lord, use them for your glory and my good. You're the master, I love you. You're the master, I love you, Jesus. Our prayer team's coming. They're gonna stand to the right and left. Real quick, guys, if you'll come. If you'll come and stand, we're gonna pray for you. If we can pray with you about anything. If you, if you, pray, to come, if you pray to come back, we would just wanna connect with you and encourage you. If you're sick in body and need prayer, if you say, I just have this stuff and, you know, I just... Just pray for me. We want to pray for you. You can have the joy of heaven when you have heaven here. Come on. Come on. Don't believe the lies of the enemy. 
sing a song together. If we can pray about, with you about one of these or anything, if you'll come, we want to pray with you. Come on. Come on. Sing this song together with us. A thousand generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Cause your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, your name stands above them all. All thrones and dominions, all powers and positions, your name stands above them all, and the angels cry, holy, all creation cries, song forever to the Lamb. And if you walk in freedom, and if you bear His name, sing the song forever to the Lamb. Oh, we'll sing the song forever in the name. Holy, all creation cries. Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. Hear your people sing. Hear your people sing. Your name is the highest. Your name is the 
is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and position your name stands above them all sing your name your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all Holy, all creation cries. Holy, you are lifted high. Holy, holy forever. Hear your people. Holy to the King of Peace. Holy, you will always be. Holy, holy forever. So I was over there just worshiping the Lord, and I just want to give opportunity for some gifts to flow. If you're here, maybe you have a word of exhortation, uh, a, a prophetic word, um, and you're a, a connected member of this body, and, and you want to submit that to the, to the body. I think there's someone here that just has a, maybe a simple word of exhortation, of encouragement, and I just want to call that forth. And uh, if you're here, and I just want to give opportunity for those gifts, just pause a moment and see what the Lord would say to us. We're real easy around here. You don't have to stress out about it. We'll pause. Would you come and, would you come real quick? Grab a mic. Yeah, come right here so I can see you, brother. See here so I can see you. Uh, I kind of feel like uh, there's a person here. Just me. Turn around. Yeah. yeah. There's, yeah. there's a person or persons here uh, this morning that you're in a cycle. Mm. You're going around and around. Yeah. You're going nowhere. You come to church, you praise God, you give, you do all your, you know, theatrics, but you're not experiencing the reality of the power of God. And it's, it's just religion. God hates religion. And you may have religion. You may be a, a constant member coming to this church over and over, you know, being, performing, all that, but it's not real. God wants to touch you. His, his kingdom it's a kingdom of power. Yes. Please don't leave this church this morning. Please don't, without knowing God can touch you. See, his, see, he's king. He has a kingdom, and his kingdom has power. That's right. Amen? Come on, yeah. And his kingdom is at hand. What's that mean? It's touchable. True. Yeah, yeah. It's tangible. Mm. It's, it's real. Mm. It's deliverance and touch. So I'm going to challenge anybody here to, this morning that you're here and you've been in that cycle mm -hmm. over and over. God you want us. the touch of God. You want the power of God. You're tired of the uh, religious kingdom. You want the real kingdom of Jesus. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of God is not word only, but in power. Yeah. So I'm going to ask wherever you are, come right now, take a step out, be bold. Don't let the devil hold you back. Come on. Just come on right up here. The pastor's going to pray for you. And you're going to have a touch of God. The power of God is going to come on. Come on. Aren't you tired of religion? Come on. Come, come on. on. Aren't come you on. tired come on. of religion? You, you go, you know, the, it's sad to say there's a lot of churches today Jesus. that um, they go through the same routine Jesus. over and over and over and over and over. And over. But Jesus. no power. Jesus. No manifestation of the Holy Ghost. We're a Pentecostal church. We are a spirit-filled church. We believe in signs and wonders to them that believe. 
Amen. So I'm gonna answer. Come on, come on. I know come on. More. Yeah. No, there's more. I, I would, if it's all right, I'd like to pray for you. Yes, I, you started this. So you're gonna help come me. On, come on. <laughs> yes. Pray, come on. I come, I come on. Everybody, come up here. Come on. come on. Just step out. It's gonna require you to step out. Come on. Come if you on. want to touch a touch of God in your life, just come. We're gonna pray for you. You want to touch a touch of God in your life? Come on. God, I believe the power of God's gonna come on. I believe you. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, if you want to touch a God in your life, come on, we're going to pray for you right now. Yes, amen, amen. This is real, you know, I'm not here blabbing my lips, man. Come on, come on, come on. Jesus loves you. I'm going to touch you, man. I know what the Bible is, and I also know what religion is. Come on, yes, 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 come on. I really do know what religion is. Come on, Jesus is Lord. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Don't want turn around. Face me. Face me. Sweetheart. Turn this way. This is about you the Lord. Not want you on God, you, Jesus. the real Thank God, Jesus. the God that our pastor talked about. Thank you, great Jesus. joy. Come on, do you have that joy? If you don't have that joy, please come forward. So we're going to ask you to come out right now. Come on, it's got to be more. Yeah, come on. Please don't leave this building without the touch of God, without the joy, because how you can affect other people when they see religion in you and they don't see the real Jesus. And I'm not here. Looking down on you and preaching down on you. Come on, Joe. I have a burden for this church. Yeah, I want to see the come power on, just begin God to worship here. the Lord. Just begin. I want to see begin the to worship the Lord. Manifest. Come on, let's just begin to worship. Let's begin to worship. In the name of Jesus. Come on, let's begin to worship. Come on. Come on. Let's begin to worship here. We're getting back. Come just on, let's begin to worship. Come on. Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your power. Come on, prayer leaders. Just come on. We're just gonna lay hands on these folks. Jesus, we pray for a real touch. And the angels cry, Holy, all creation cries, Holy, you are lifted high. Oh 
burden is light, his yoke is easy. He loves you. He wants you to experience his joy. He wants it to be complete in us. Complete in us. <laughs> I just picture when I was praying for one of the ladies down here, it was just this little girl who just had this dress on and she was just skipping along. Just, in, just skipping along. Just the Lord wants you to enjoy him. <laughs> I don't know if anyone has told you that before. He wants you to enjoy him. He's on the front porch with his arms folded, with a scour in his face. You better come back begging the right way or you're out back with the, with, in the back, burning your way. Jesus says, no, 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 no. That's not how it works with grace. I run, I've run to you. He's come to us. He wraps his arm around that son. He kisses him. He has sandals, a robe, a ring, right? He welcomes him back, kills the fatted calf, restores him back to the house. <laughs> Come on. Enjoy the Lord. Enjoy the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Enjoy serving him. Enjoy. It's a joy to surrender. It's not a task, it's a joy. I don't have to have it all together. I don't have to have it figured out. I don't have to have every answer. I serve the one who does. And he's got it. And if I'm with him, I got it. Because we're together. Come on, forever. <laughs> Let's pray a blessing over you. Would you just hold your hands, palms open. God, I pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your presence this morning. Thank you, Lord, that your anointing is here to break yokes of bondage and you expose the lies of the enemy and replace them with the truth of the word. And thank you for that. Lord, I pray that you would liberate us to run. Liberate us to enjoy you at Christmas. Liberate us to not be all stressed out, but to be uh, full of joy. I pray that over your people. Now I pray blessing. Those who are traveling, I pray blessing as they travel. Maybe they're out of town. Maybe they're with family members who are hard to get along with and they don't know what to do. I just pray you give them peace and joy in that. I pray that in the name of Jesus. As you go today, the ushers are there to receive your connection cards. If you're a guest, we have a gift for you. Our hospitality team is there to the left. Martine is there to greet you. Thank you so much for your generosity and your giving, your obedience to the tithe and offering. It's making a difference. We're seeing lives change. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Next week, we'll be in here at 10 o'clock. All the kids, everybody together to celebrate on Christmas Eve. We'll have a candle lighting service. It'll be awesome. Have a great, great day. And I hope, to, hope you have a Merry Christmas. I don't see you before. God bless you. Creation cry. Oh.